So you started up Genshin because you saw my sweet video demonstrating how awesome it is. Or maybe you saw your mom screaming at her phone, give me more resin. I mean, whatever the case is, you're locked and loaded, ready to play. So sit back, grab a notepad or open up notepad.exe like a normal human being and get ready to be bombarded with incredibly useful tips that'll help you get started. By the way, if you want to help me out, do that one thing, you know, where you like hit the thumb and then the, the red and the the bell. Professional call to action. You know it. Before we get started, I have one disclaimer and it's important. Play how you want, have fun. By no means do you need to go watch a bunch of guide videos figuring out all the ins and outs of this game, but the fact that you clicked on this video probably means you want to level as efficiently as possible, so I should probably shut up about now and just... Here's a quick list of everything that I'm gonna be covering. And if you're interested, you can highlight the little navigation bar at the bottom and it'll be sectioned out so you can find specific topics easier. All right, chop, chop, let's go. Understand the terminology. So before we go into this, I wanna kind of go over the abbreviations of the words I'll be using. So you're not like, what is that? It's exactly what you sound like. AR or adventure rank. This kind of refers to what your account level is. To sum it up, the higher your AR gets, the harder the world will become while also unlocking certain level restricted content and better loot. It's a good thing. Stamina. Stamina refers to how long you can sprint until you can't sprint anymore. This mechanic to me is very important because raising it is one of the first things you're gonna wanna do when starting to play Genshin, but how do you do it? Animoculuses, Geoculuses. We'll just call it Oculuses because Diablo 2. These are collectible items scattered through the first and second area being Monastat and Liwa. As you collect them, you can turn them into a specific location and it'll allow you to raise your maximum stamina. Resin. This is a resource that regenerates over time, more specifically once every eight minutes. As you progress farther in the game, you're going to notice a lot more content that's going to require this resin. So use it wisely. And I'll go over that here on tip six. Mora. This is the Genshin's version of in-game currency. You can kind of think of it as gold if you play World of Warcraft. You get it from killing mobs, doing quests, or doing pretty much any in-game activity. But it's also required if you want to upgrade anything in this game. And then we have Primo Gems, which is the premium currency in the game. This is used to pull new characters and refresh your resin so you can do more things in a day. You can also get more by busting out your handy dandy wallet. Number two. Reroll! If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should definitely check out my previous video posted on this channel going over how to reroll, if you should reroll, who you should reroll for, but essentially it just means keep creating a new account, getting to AR7, and then figuring out do I like the people that I pull. It's really great because this game is a lot of RNG on who you're going to actually pull, but it's not mandatory, and I don't want you sitting there rerolling, getting frustrated because you can't pull a dilute and you end up giving up on the game. That's like the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Don't kill yourself over it. And remember, every character in this game can pretty much do the majority of the content, if not all of the content in this game the Genshin Interactive Map. If you want your experience to go as smooth as possible, use this site. There's a link down in the description. This allows you to find different things in the world and also mark off objectives that you have already gotten. Keep in mind, you have to be logged in through the site for it to save what you've marked, but it's super duper helpful when it comes to marking off those oculuses that I talked about before to make it easier to collect all of them to get that stamina up nice and high. Genshin has also added in some implementations recently that kind of does what the map does. So for example, if you wanted to kill a specific mob because you're looking for a specific material, you can click on this area up here. Looks like a book, yeah. Navigate to the bosses tab, highlight mobs to see what they drop, and if it's something you want, click navigate, teleport to that area, kill it, then rinse and repeat. Oh, and while we're also talking about the handbook, keep an eye on the tab called experience. It has certain requirements, and once you complete them, you get rewards. Feel free to check in on that occasionally to see if you got yourself some free goodies. Four, get your shrines and collect everything. You'll eventually need everything at some point, whether it's killing a mob, picking a flower, mining ore, doesn't matter, you're gonna need it. And while you're at it, make sure to grab every single waypoint and shrine you come across. They both allow you to teleport around the map and the shrine specifically. You can use it to heal your team and that's where you turn in those oculuses to increase your stamina. Seriously increase your stamina. Number five, focus on one or two characters. What do I mean by focus? Well, characters that you obtain can be leveled in multiple ways. You can level their actual level, their weapons, their talents, and their artifacts. And leveling each of these will require you to use some sort of resources. So spreading yourself thin on multiple characters isn't the best idea. There's a quick overview of all of it. To raise your character's level, you're going to need character XP scrolls. You acquire these through quests and ley lines. Hold on. I'll explain that in a little bit. Weapon levels is going to require you to farm ore, and you get that by breaking random veins in the world. There's iron, white iron, and crystal. And crystal is the best, but collect all of them because you're going to need others for crafting and random quests. I'm telling you, man, you're going to need everything. Now, as you're leveling up a character, their actual level, you're going to be able to level their talents. You can level up their auto attack, elemental skill, and their burst. Which one do you level? Well, as a general rule, if you just seem to be popping onto a character just to hit their E and their Q button, their elemental skill and their elemental burst, just level up those. But if you see your 
yourself auto attacking on a character a lot level up the attack too i know very confusing artifacts are kind of like your gear you have five pieces you can wear flower feather sand cup and helm. Talking about what stats you want on each piece for each character could be another 30 minute video on itself. But as a quick guide, here's what I can say. First of all, you're going to want to focus on the main stat. That's that top big one up here. The flower will always roll HP and the feather will always roll attack. Now the other three pieces of your artifacts can differ between multiple rolls. You can see on the screen, this is a diagram that shows what can be rolled on each artifact piece. But as a safe bet, just go for attack percent. Later on, you're going to want to switch to different stats, but I'll have a guide on that in the future, covering it more in detail. One last note, take a look at this graph. You're going to see at certain adventure ranks, you could raise your character level to a higher maximum level. This is signified by their ascension. Weapons work the same way. Once you hit the max level, it's going to require you to ascend it, which is going to require material. But how do you get these materials for like leveling your weapon and your character and you know, like ascending and stuff? That leads us to number six. Resin, what to spend it on. Resin is a resource that regenerates over time and it's required for a lot of the content in the game. The number one thing you should always try to avoid, are you looking at me? Make me bigger, make me bigger. There, there we go. Don't ever let it cap out. I swear if you cap out that resin, I will find where you live, come to you when you're sleeping and use it because it's really inefficient to let your resin cap out. You're welcome. All right, so how do we use the resin? Well, you have ley lines, domains, world bosses, and weekly bosses. Now, Ley Lions are the first you unlock. That's at AR 12, and these can either grant you character XP scrolls to level your character, or Mora. They cost 20 resin each. Domains will either drop artifacts, or talent books and weapon ascension material, but they don't drop all of them all the time. So you have to pay attention to what day it is and it will notify you which one they're dropping. So you kind of got to plan ahead and which one you want to do. These also cost 20 resin. World bosses can be found all around the world and each one will drop a specific mat required to level up certain heroes. Their element will correspond to what materials they'll drop. So like a pyro regis vine will drop a material to level up a pyro character. They also drop gear for your characters, which they're mostly pieces of shit. These cost 40 resin each. With the weekly bosses, there's currently three of them, and you can do each of them once a... Uh, huh? Yeah, a week. You're a smart one. Huh? Doing them will drop similar loot to world bosses, but with one addition. They'll drop a specific mat that's required for you when you're leveling up your talents later on for like a legendary mat. They'll drop one of those. Good luck getting the right one. You might be wondering, which one do I do? Well, when you get AR-12, do the ley lines because those are the only ones you can do. And again, if you cap out your resin, I'm going to do that thing where I come over and then I do that other thing. Never mind. At AR-16, you're going to unlock the weapon ascension domains, and you can do those if, like, your main character wants to level up his weapon and he needs materials. At AR-27, the talent book domains are going to unlock, and again, if your main character needs to level them up, then do them. And then there's artifact domains, and those you usually are advised to hold off until AR-45. Mainly because at AR-45, if you run the domains, they will drop a guaranteed 5-star legendary, which is awesome. It's not the end of the world if you want to run a few artifact domains here and there. Maybe gotten really unlucky with world bosses or you just haven't found decent gear but in general you're gonna wait until AR 45 to really hit that artifact grinding and the last thing to note is as you're progressing through the game you're gonna get a material called fragile resin that is again advised to wait until your AR 45 and it allows you to refresh your resin to really start on that artifact grinding but just like with anything do whatever you want in this game if you want to blow your fragile resin early great the last thing I want is for you to hold off until AR 45 and before you even get there you get bored with the game and then you quit if that happens i'm so sorry but you know pass off some of that fragile resin tldr avoid artifact domains until you hit at least 40 preferably 45 and only do ley lines if you're desperate for mora or character xp number seven do your daily stuff commissions expeditions mining and mats i know it's a lot but just stay with me starting off you're not gonna have access to these commissions or expeditions commissions will unlock at ar12 and expeditions will unlock at ar14 commissions are daily quests pretty much and they're going to be giving you the majority of your adventure rank every day they also reward you with currency like mora and primo gems you know that waifu currency expeditions is a feature that allows you to send off a character and then they come back with a specific resource you can highlight each circle and it'll inform you what it'll give back it can be anything from meat ores mora flowers whatever you can only start off by doing two at a time but you can get up to five at a time as you increase your ar here's my general tips only do the 20 hour ones they yield the best results the ore mora and meat in that order have been found to me to be the best options. Of course, if you're just grinding a specific ingredient and you see you can get it through the expeditions, well then do it. And you can find all of these at the same person being the adventure rank representative in the middle of the towns. With mining, you can talk to the local blacksmith in Liowa or Monastat 
and ask him where ore is and it'll mark stuff on the map go mine it and then you can craft weapon enhancement crystals which will allow you to upgrade weapons try to do this like every day because you're going to need a lot leveling up all the weapons and lastly mats there are tons of mobs in the world that you do not need resin to kill some of them are kind of mini bosses some of them are just little baby mobs whatever they are they will drop a material that will be needed to level up one of the characters whether it be either ascending their talents it's just like i said you just need everything in the game you can either a figure out what characters you're going to level and notate all the things that you're going to need and farm those mobs or or just farm all of them in preparation to whatever character you might get so you are ready to level them. Number eight, understand those team comps. You may have heard me say main DPS a few times and you're like, what the hell is that? What it refers to is you have one character that's gonna be out for the majority of the time auto attacking and the other characters are just there to support the team. Let's take this team for example. We have my main character who is an animo, Amber, fire, Jungling, fire, and Barbara Water. Here's how I would do a normal encounter. I'd walk up to a group of enemies with Amber and drop her elemental skill, the little bunny, to taunt them. Swap to Zhang Ling, drop her skill, and start spitting out fire damage. Then swap to my main character, hold her skill down to swirl all the fire and group everyone up. Swap to Barbara, use her ability to make sure we have a heal out for any active character on the field. Then back to Zhang Ling to spam her auto attacks while using her skill if it comes off cooldown. If the fight is still going on after about seven to 10 seconds, I can just rinse and repeat those first steps cycling through all the characters and using their skills. Another thing to note is at any point as I'm swapping to the characters and they have their ultimate up, use that too. I mean, except Barbara, because that's like a big heal and I use that for an emergency, but you get the general flow. One character is out the majority of the fight and the other ones just pop out for a second or two to use their elemental skill and their elemental burst if it's up. There's a decent amount of comps out there that'll stray from this general concept, but it's good to have this baseline down. Number nine, spend Primo Gems wisely. As you level up, you're going to come across three different resources. Primo Gems, Intertwined Fates, and and equate fates. Primo gems is the currency used to get new characters and refresh resin. Intertwined fates and acquaint fates are tokens used to just get new characters. You'll see three different banners. There's a character event, weapon event, and standard banner. Intertwined fates are for the event banners, the character event and the weapon event, and acquaints are just used for the standard. The character and weapon event banners both rotate every 21 days, and each time it'll have new characters and new weapons you can get. The standard banner will pretty much have your standard run of the draw things you can pull from, but they'll occasionally add in the newer items being brought in through the event banners as time progresses. You can always see what you can get out of a banner by clicking details at the bottom left. Oh, and if you're a new player, you're gonna have a fourth banner, a beginner's banner. It has like Noel on there. You'll be able to do a couple 10 pulls from it and it'll disappear forever. So don't worry about that too much. Now at any time you try to pull from a banner and you don't have the required fate being the intertwined or the acquaint fate, it'll ask you if you'd like to use primo gems to pull instead. It's 160 primo gems per fate, aka 160 primo gems per pull. But which one should you pull from? Here's a priority list I like to go by. Never buy acquaint fates with primo gems. Use any acquaint fates you get from the game on the beginner banner first and then swap to using it on the normal banner. And if you ever spend primo gems on a banner, always do an event banner. Let me try to explain how this process works when you pull from a specific banner. There might be something you've heard of called a pity system. If you look at the details of each banner, it'll show rates of getting four stars or five stars. You'll see a rule that states every 10 pulls, you'll get a guaranteed four star, and every 90 pulls will guarantee you a five star. This is that pity system, and it's separate for each banner. So that means if you were to do like five pulls on a character event banner, and then decide to switch over to the normal banner, then you'll still need to do 10 more pulls on that normal banner to hit that four star pity. Whereas if you were just to stay on the character event banner, do that five more pulls, that'll get you a guaranteed four star. But you might be wondering, why don't I just do 10 pulls on the normal banner? It looks cooler. I mean, yeah, sure, Mona's great. <laughs> Let's take one more look at the character event banner. The event banner always has rate up characters. What this means is every time you pull a four star or a five star, there's a 50% chance it will be either this five star or one of these four stars. If at any time you pull something other than this five star or these four stars, it will guarantee that the next one will be one of those. So let's say you do a 10 pull. Guaranteed four star, right? And bam! And Amber, I got no time for that. That's not one of those characters. Fret not, because your next four star you pull will be a 100% chance to be one of these four stars. And the same thing goes for the five star. So if you pull a five star from this banner, and it's not the rate up character, which is currently Albedo, the next one you pull will be him 100%. And here's the great thing. If you start doing pulls on an event banner, let's say you get to about 50, and then the banner rotates. Boo. On that next banner, it will save the 50 pulls you did on the previous one. So you'll only need to do 40 pulls on the next banner to get a guaranteed five star, AKA the pity progress saves when the banner rotates. 
The last bad thing I'd like to note about the regular banner is how many 5 star characters you can pull and how many 5 star weapons you can pull. The odds of you getting a 5 star weapon and a 5 star character is about a 50-50 split. I'm not saying 5 star weapons are bad, they're not. But starting off, it's important to build your roster as wide as possible with different elements. Plus, new characters are fun. So stick with the character event banner when in doubt and you should be fine. Oh, and I also mentioned you can refresh your resin with Primo Gems, right? But should you do it? That depends if you're free to play and how much of a rush you're in. I did one or two a day as I was leveling up getting to AR-45 because I was really rushing to get to the artifact grinding section of the game. But you really should just take it sleazy, man. Maybe do one a day because the dailies that you do, well, you'll get enough Primo Gems to pay for it. But that means then you're not saving for more pulls. So my suggestion, be patient, get more waifus. And if you're desperate to rush, try to keep it at three refreshes a day or less. And number 10, do the Spiral Abyss. You're going to want to get Xiong Ling. As soon as you hit AR-20, you're going to have the ability to go to this section down here in the map, do a little puzzle, unlock a teleporter, and bam, you're in this island, and there's a thing called the Spiral Abyss. This is a challenge you can do that's on the side, but you get you some extra goodies. I suggest you immediately attempt to clear this as soon as you can at AR-20, at least to the first three floors. The reason I stress this is because if you get her and you pair her with a craftable weapon called the Crescent Pike, you will have yourself a solid main DPS. She's pretty much like the best free to play carry in the game. Whew. So that's pretty much all the tips. I wanted to cover so much more, but oh, I didn't want to make this video like 30 minutes long. These next videos should be coming out a lot quicker and a decent amount shorter because this was my last all encompassing guide I want to do. And I really want to hone in on specific mechanics of the game. I'm going to leave you off with some frequently asked questions that seem to come up on my stream all the time. And if you have any other questions and I didn't cover it in this video and you can't wait for the new ones to come out, feel free to drop by my stream. My stream link is down in the description along with my stream schedule. Oh, and we also have a discord channel that's also linked down in the description. We've got Genshin channels. You can talk to people to play Genshin, get their opinion on your artifacts, you want to show off sweet pulls, whatever, join it. Do it now. Touch the cow. All right, let's hit these frequently asked questions. I keep dying. Help. When you tap the sprint button, you get immunity frames on the startup of it, which means you can't be damaged when you start up your dash. You can use it to avoid damage. Each character will have an attack sequence when spamming your auto attacks, and you can reset this auto attack rotation by either jumping or dashing. This can be incredibly helpful because certain characters, this will increase their DPS, or you can skip the last attack in their attack sequence. The last attacks are generally the slowest, and while they can stagger an enemy if you land it, it can leave you susceptible to just being hit in the face. What weapon should I be using or upgrading? Okay. So here's some notable three star and four star weapons that you can craft or pick up in the world and feel safe to upgrade them when you're starting off this game. For bows, three star slingshot and four star craftable compound bow. One handed sword is a four star craftable called prototype rancor. And you also get one for just doing story quests. Claymore is a debate club, which is a three star and prototype aminus is a four star craftable. That claymore is bonkers. Polearm crescent pike, four star craftable, best polearm in the game right now for DPS. Put it on Shung Ling, just wreck everything. It's nuts. And catalyst, mainly thrilling tales of the dragon slayer. It's a three star drop. You can use this on your catalyst support, like a Barbara, if you have her in your group, you can use it as an attack buff for your main DPS. So you can swap to Barbara, pop her E or her heal or whatever, and then go to your main damage. And then they get the attack percent increase. I've run out of quests I can do. It says I need to be higher AR. Yeah, this can happen if you just kind of burn through the story quest. Take some time, go explore, get the waypoints, all the shrines, collect all the oculuses, get chests. There's a lot to do in the game. If you don't feel like doing that, you can just wait until the next day for when the daily commissions reset or the daily quests, and you'll get a bunch of AR from that. And maybe that'll put you over the threshold to unlock the next quest. Just keep in mind when you get into later ARs, there are no quests. So, you know, take your time and appreciate them while you have them. All right, I'm done, done. Time for me to head back into the dark dungeon and get editing on the next video. Until then, always remember, don't be a dick. Have a good game. See ya.